Hello and welcome to the start of a brand new special mini-series to take us over the Christmas period. We're playing FM19 Touch and we've just taken over at Newcastle United who are in absolute crisis at the bottom of the Premier League. It's mid-January and we've got an awful lot of work to do to save this club from relegation back to the Championship. Join me over the next four days as we try and work hard in the transfer window, tactically and on the pitch, to try and keep this side in the Premier League. You can see we're marooned at the bottom and even if we win the next game, we won't come out of the drop zone. So let's look at all the introductory messages before we see how much of a pickle we're in. We're 20th in the Premier Division as expected, taking over from Rafa Benitez. They've had 17 straight league defeats. That is not a good start to the club and I'm sure morale will be very low as a result. But obviously I've picked Newcastle because they're a huge club. They do struggle with investment as well. I have no idea how much money they'll have to spend in this window, but hopefully we can keep this brilliant club in the Premier League. We visited there last January with Luton Town as a fan, going to the FA Cup third round tie, and it was a fantastic city, a brilliant club and a lovely stadium. So I want to do my bit to try and keep them up. Let's look at the transfer obligations. There's probably quite a few out on loan. I don't know if we'll be able to recall any of them, but there are some players that may be useful there. The likes of Dwight Gale in particular, who've just got a little bit of pace and quality about them. If we look at the injury update, Florian Lejeune's out injured at the moment, one of the centre-halves, but they've got plenty of those, and they've got a couple of recurring injuries with Modi Army and Jamal Lascelles, who I think is still the captain there. We've got a question from the media. What are our initial thoughts? We're absolutely delighted. Let's hope it goes well. Expectations review. We've just got to stay up. I presume as they've been losing games galore, they're probably out of all the cups as well. They lost in the FA Cup third round at home to League One Coventry. They won their first Premier League games of the season. Three in a row, they must have been top after that. But it's all gone wrong since then, despite a draw against City. And they've now lost 17 on the bounce. What I am checking to see is who we've got left, which teams we've played twice already. And perhaps most importantly, we've still got Cardiff to play. We've still got Huddersfield. Who else are down there? The likes of Burnley are strugglers this season. So we should be able to get a few results, if nothing else. However, on the flip side of that, we've still got to play all of the top six again. So there's six results we definitely won't be getting. So our first game's at home to Leicester in just a few hours' time. But this episode is all about looking at the squad and what we might be able to do in the transfer window. So let's look at our first team. If we put them in general info, it's quite a big squad, but not necessarily a high quality one. Dubravka's a brilliant goalkeeper. We know that already. Fairly solid across the board. And in fact, we'll put them in order of reports so we can see how they're rated. Dubravka's a standout above Darlow. There's some very good defenders at the club. Jamal Lascelles being chief among them. And the likes of Clark and Fernandez able at centre-half too. In fact, all of the centre-halves are rated really well. It's definitely a position we won't need to strengthen. However, once we move to right back, we see that we've got two options, but they're not quite as strong as our centre-halves. And although we do have a good left-back at the club in Dummett, he's the only one here. In midfield, again, there's quite a few good options. The likes of Matt Ritchie, Shelby and Diame are well-rated, as is Ki Sung Young. But unfortunately, he's away on international duty for the next month. Perez and Kennedy have three-and-a-half star ability too, but there are a lot of players we'd like to get out as well. And if we move on to the front line, no real standout players, a few three stars, including Dwight Gale who's out on loan, and then Solomon Rondon is ironically the worst rated of the lot. I would have thought he would have been the standout man, but it seems that he's finishing and first touch, and in fact almost all of his technical attributes have gone down since last season. So plenty of work to do, and it will very much be a surprise when you see the side we put out for the first game, because I haven't got a clue what it'll be yet. We'll just see if there's anyone decent in the reserves. We've got another three-star keeper in Rob Elliott, who did have a little period as the first-choice keeper there a season or two ago. But what we'll probably do out of the keepers, because Woodman's there too, is get rid of a couple of them and try and make sure that we've got the best players at the club possible. There are a few of the old championship players down here. The likes of Lazar, the left-back, he's just two-star ability, so we'd probably want to replace him, and a few of the youngsters we can hopefully get out on loan. I know it would be ideal to just say, let's sell all the youngsters and have as much money as possible, as it's only a half-season save, but I don't want it to become too unrealistic, so we'll just sell the ones that we would have if we were managing them over a two- or three-year period. But the moment of truth's here. We find out how realistic the game is as we look at the transfer budget. 
Oh, I tell you what, that's not bad. We've got nearly 24 million and over 150 grand of the wage budget as well. That is a really pleasant surprise. One of the other reasons I picked Newcastle is because I thought I'd have to wheel and deal a lot. But here we've got a little bit of money and 23 million may be able to get us a couple of decent players. Because this is just a short FM Touch challenge, I'm not going to be following my normal rules. We're going to go straight into the player search screen. We will see who's been scouted, but I've got no problem with finding players on the transfer list for this one. Willie Caballero's popped up, who would be our best keeper at the club, but he's not transfer listed, and realistically he's not enough of a step up for us to sign him. Ramadan Sobby's the other one that's come up from Huddersfield. A good player who can cover all three attacking wing positions, but I'd imagine he'd probably cost quite a bit of money. In fact, he'd be more than our whole budget, so we're definitely not going to be getting him. But let's go to the player search. We just want to see if anyone's transfer listed of decent quality. We're going to drop it to unsure and just look at the transfer list. So Musa Sissoko, a former player, he could be a useful one for us. But Danny Drinkwater a bit further down, he's one I'd certainly have my eye on. There's also a left back there, Marcus Sutner from Brighton. I'm not sure if he'd be any good, but certainly an able deputy for the season. So he may be one we look at as well. But a few good central midfielders. And we've even got a right back or two, though I don't know there'll be a step up from what we've got at the moment. Carl Jenkinson's on there, as is Martin Kelly from Palace. But I don't think they'll be any better than the two we've already got. Are there any others further down, just in case there's a superstar? Miguel Britos is quite a good player, but he's dropped off quite dramatically there. We're certainly not going to be signing him, and now we're down to the sort of lower levels. We can't really look at the loan listed players, because we've already got two domestic loans in at the club, and can't bring in another. They're obviously Solomon Rondon and Kennedy, from West Brom and Chelsea respectively. So we can't do anything in the low market, but we can try and get three or four of these backup players out of the club just to wheel and deal a little bit. Replace the backups with players that are good enough for the first 11 and then our current first 11 become backups. However, I say that before looking at the league table. Let's see how many points adrift we are. Oh dear, we're eight points behind. We're on 10 points after 21 games. 18 points is the cut-off mark at the moment, and Cardiff there in 19th have a poor goal difference, so hopefully they'll slide as the season goes on. Our top goal scorer has two goals. Have we just not been scoring goals at all or something? Well, every game we've lost we haven't scored. The club have scored one goal in the last 15 odd games, and this is going to be one hell of a challenge, even more so than I thought it was. So there's a bit about our plans and the introduction to this series and we're going to be back in a moment for the first game of the series once I've decided my tactic. We'll see you in a second for that one. Okay, we're back for our first game of this series. We're playing against Leicester, the side directly above us. And I just wish we'd had a chance to get a couple of our transfers in beforehand. Unfortunately, it's not the case. So we're working with the squad we were given. But we have got some big news potentially. If we go and look at the transfer market at the moment, there's a few players we're trying to get out, as we've mentioned. Carl Darlow on a permanent. Lazar, the left back as well. A few of the youngsters on loan and Christian Atsu who we're just waiting for the bid to come in for. However, if we go and look at our ins, there is some potentially big signings coming in. Firstly, we've got a couple of free agents. One of them is a left back. We'd identified we needed a backup. He's a good player. He's played for France in the past. And he's always been a good fullback on Football Manager. I'm calling him him because I don't want to have a go at pronouncing his name. I know his first name's Benoit and we'll leave it at that. He's 33 now but he's still naturally fit and he'll be perfect to rotate with Dummett for the rest of the season. If we go to the others first, we've got Viatri. He was highlighted by our director of football as a free agent. He's playing for Penarol at the moment, but he's on a free contract and we can bring him in as a backup option up front. It would allow us to let Rondon go, who's on 25 grand a week and won't be in the squad based on his attributes here. The other option up there is the one and only Peter Crouch. 37 years old now, but he's on the transfer list for 110 grand. We've agreed a contract with him, it's about 12000 a week, so as long as he picks us, we'd be happy to have him here. He's still brilliant mentally and very good technically, he can jump and he can be that target man option if we want to move to a front two towards the end of a game, and I just think he'd still be a really good signing for us. However, the big two are in midfield, the areas we'd identified. We need a second option in central midfield, and we've got two players here who could be superstars. So Danny Drinkwater from Chelsea, he's on the transfer list for £4 million. Just a solid all-rounder, can play in the centre, is quite versatile if we need to drop to a holding role or an advanced man. 
And I just feel like he'd be a really good addition to the squad. We've agreed a contract with him as well. He's hoping to take a wage cut to 75 grand a week, which would be really good for us if we can get him here. An England international and very much a good player for our level. And the other one is a former player here, Musa Sissoko, obviously having a great season for Spurs in real life, and he's just got that pace power and those attributes. He can play on the right or in the middle, and I feel like he'd be an absolute superstar for us for this half a year. Again, has agreed a slight wage cut towards 75,000, so we're just hoping that those accept our offers. With the others going out, these guys could work out perfectly. We just need an offer to come in for Christian Atsu to ensure that the wage bill's covered. But let's get into the first game against Leicester. If we show you the tactic we've set up, it's something that's very rare for me. I've gone for an asymmetrical formation, something I don't normally do. But that's because we've got a natural wing back on the right and a defensive full back on the left. That's how they prefer to play. And my idea here, without having the opportunity to talk to players in FM Touch and get their morale up that way, is to try and get players in their best possible roles so they're completely confident in their position. So we've got Yedlin and Dummett at the fullbacks with Dubravka behind them in goal. He's playing as a sweeper keeper with Clark and Lascelles the centre halves. We've got the Army as the deep line defensive midfielder and Shelby as the playmaker in the middle of the pitch. With Matt Ritchie on the right wing cutting inside as an inverted winger. Then moving up to the left attacking areas, we've got Kennedy up there trying to support Muto. With a Yosi Perez in behind the aforementioned Muto up top. He's playing as a pressing forward and hopefully he can just run all day for us. We're playing a fluid counter attacking formation and we've not got too many tactical instructions on. The only one I've noticed that was on naturally is get stuck in. We're going to change that to stay on feet as the last thing we want is 100 penalties and yellow cards. But let's get into the game and keep your fingers very crossed that we can catch teams out on the counter-attack. Okay, Leicester playing a slightly similar formation, but a bit more of a traditional route. We've got to be careful with Vardy. We've got a lower defensive line to try and cope, and hopefully we'll be able to get him behind at the other end. No team talks in FM Touch, so let's get straight into it. We've got to add our widget here just to see what our team ratings are. We'll do that when the next highlight comes along. We'll make sure that the match speed between highlights is as quick as possible. Nearly half an hour in. It's the first highlight of the match. It's been an awful game. It's almost like both teams are struggling for form. Here's Shelby on the edge. Can he pull off a bit of magic? He can't. It's high and wide. And unfortunately, the first chance of the game goes begging. There's still not been a shot on target. If we get it up so we can see, we want to have the match stats there. First shot on target was for us, in fact. But we haven't seen it. It wasn't worthy of a highlight. Ten minutes to half time, and it's still nil-nil. We've got a free kick in a great position here with Richie. The army nods it in. We're on the lead. Our first game at the club. And we've managed to go 1-0 up just before the break. It's been a terrible game. But we've probably had the slightly better of it. There we go then. It's half time. We do lead 1-0 through that Modi army goal. Ironically the man who will probably be dropped if Sissoko comes in. But nevertheless we have had just about the better of that half. And we go into the second half with something to hang on to. Lascelles has the ball from the centre kick and the highlight ends with no damage done. We've got an attacking throw on the left here with Dummett. In towards Kennedy but it's going to be cleared away. It's long over the top for Vardy and Madison and this is where we've got to worry. If they get Vardy in behind we've got no one who can keep up. He's in one on one. Great challenge by Paul Dummett. He got back just in time. That is superb defending and now Gray crosses from the right but it's straight into the arms of Dubravka. A worrying sign for us. The first attack of the match for Leicester in a highlight. But we managed to hold on at 1-0 at the hour mark. It's Richie with a free kick. Just high and wide. It was never really troubling the keeper. And we're going to look to make some subs in a moment. We've got another throw on the left with Dummett around halfway this time. Iosi Perez knocks it down. Finds Dummett again. He's gone inside to shell views across halfway. Finds Muto, the centre forward. Can he hold it up? He does. He switches for Rich. Who cuts in. Goes for the shot. Hits the post and then hits Schmeichel. But he's managed to get it away. And it's still just one. I feel like if we get a second, we'd wrap this up. But unfortunately, it's not to be at the moment. And with 20 minutes to go, we're definitely going to need to make a change or two. Shelby's done okay, but I feel like we need to go a bit more defensive now. Isaac Hayden's going to come on for him. I think we're going to try him as a central midfielder on defend, just to give ourselves a base of two midfielders there. I don't really know what to do with Iosi Perez, so we'll think about that in a moment, and we'll make another change in a few minutes' time. Just for time-wasting purposes, but with 15 to go, we still have the lead. 
Just five minutes to go. It's Richie with the corner. And in swinger, Kennedy puts it in. And surely that's going to be the victory now. 2-0 on our first day. And it couldn't be much better than that for us. We could be on the way out of the relegation zone. And we could be saving them just in time. A couple of minutes to go. We'll replace Muto with Hosolu just to give ourselves an extra change up front. Let him get a stand innovation. Hosolu's natural as a complete forward, despite the fact he doesn't have any of the attributes for it. We'll make that change and then a couple more as we go into stoppage time. Two minutes of extra time left and we're just going to make the last one now for a stand innovation. Longstaff is one of the homegrown prospects at the club. He's a youngster who's on the bench, so we'll bring him on. He can play in attacking midfield and he's best as a shadow striker. So we'll leave it at that and that's should just about round off the game. It's a throw in for Leicester on the left, but I'm expecting the whistle to go any second. Chilwell gets it into Silva. It's back down the line for Chilwell again, is it? It is in the end, and it goes inside to Ian Acho. Now Ndidi, 30 yards out, switches it to Ricardo. We played a minute and a half over the stoppage time now. Dummett clears it over halfway, and the final whistle goes. And on our first day at the club, we beat Leicester 2-0 in a massive relegation six-pointer. A fantastic result, and hopefully that will improve the morale at the club somewhat. We're up to 13 points. We're still 8 points behind us. Cardiff and Brighton both won. They were playing relegation strugglers too. So we have to expect that. But hopefully we'll start to close the gap. And more importantly get some confidence in the club. A clean sheet is just as crucial. And adding a couple of goals. So be it from set pieces. Is just what we needed in this one. We'll see what they've said about the game. Apparently we've made an important step on our first day by winning this fixture. Quality of finishing was the difference. And Dummett's tackle on Vardy in the second half was absolutely crucial to that win. Richie was on form. He played brilliantly with two assists. His set-piece delivery is going to be so important for the rest of the season. And it's a first win in 18 games for the club. Although it's our first game here and we've managed to get straight on the roll with a three points. So a fantastic start to this mini-series. Obviously, we're going to be playing it all the way up to Thursday. So four episodes from it. Let's look at the schedule to see what tomorrow's will be. We'll play a few games off camera before we get there. So we'll complete the January window and play those top of the table teams. And in fact, we'll come back for a triple header. We'll play Cardiff, Watford and Burnley back to back. Focus on the pitch action and not much else. And just round off who we've signed in the transfer window. But if you did enjoy this episode and start to the new mini-series, please put a thumbs up on the video. It is the last video that will be out before Christmas Day, so I wish you all a happy Christmas. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager content from my two long-term stories. Firstly, the head coach where we work under a director of football with no say in transfers or contracts. We're a journeyman in that one and can move between clubs. As well as my other FM19 story, part of the furniture with Torquay United. A one club challenge where we take the team from the lowest playable league in England to the top of domestic and European football. There's also weekly content from our FIFA 19 lower league career with Crew Alexandra. That's out every Friday at 4.30pm and this one will be on the channel over the next four days. But a massive thanks for watching as always and we'll see you next time. <laughs>